Well, that's sort of the direction we're headed right now. The biggest difference is, of course, that we're not heading in a strictly orthodox Marxist direction. Uh, we're seeing this, this huge consolidation on the part of the corporatocracy, the, the government-wedded corporate interests and financial interests in Wall Street. Everything is being done right now for the express purpose of ensuring that their position is secure when the new financial and political architecture is uh, is established and uh, we're ushered into whatever system uh, is, awaits us. And the, the lineaments of that system, of course, are taking shape right now. Uh, Mr. Kissinger uh, was sent to Moscow. If I'm not mistaken, he was sent to Moscow during the uh, the uh, interregnum or the effective interregnum between uh, the election and the inauguration at a time when Mr. Bush was a lame duck and Barack Obama was still merely the president-elect. Uh, Henry Kissinger was sent over there uh, to talk with uh, Putin and others about another nuclear arms control regime. And uh, anytime you're talking about nuclear arms reduction, eventually you're talking about building up some kind of a, of a mechanism, a supervisory mechanism, through the United Nations to administer arms control or arms reduction. And the long-range plan is to have either the United Nations or a successor organization. Hold that thought. We'll be back in just a moment here with all of our stations. Well, this is Dr. Stan. Our guest is William Gregg, and we're certainly talking about what's going on financially. And, of course, William was talking about Henry Kissinger going over to Moscow just a, a short period of time ago to talk about new arms, nuclear arms control. And, of course, if you're going to have nuclear arms control, you have to have a supranational organization uh, who will regulate this. And, of course, everything is going to be done by outside organizations regulating every aspect of what goes on here in the United States. That's what it's all about. Timothy Geithner talks about how we're going to have to have other organizations, of course, regulating our economy after all. But what's wrong with that? We already have a World Bank. We already have uh, certainly a World Police Force. We already have World Trade uh, uh, officials. You know, why shouldn't we have a financial regulators? But it's all about regulation. It's all about the New World Order. Before we go on, William, I'd like you to go ahead and get out your blog site, tell people how they can get in touch with your material, and then we'll go ahead and proceed. Well, I really appreciate that. I <clears throat> have a blog site called Pro Libertate, which is a three to five times updated web blog that contains essays usually ranging anywhere from 900 words up to several thousand, typically the between 1,200 to 1,800 words. And I say that by way of admonition, advisory, to anybody who wants to go check it out, because it is a longer form of essay than most bloggers generate. Most blogs are much more digestible, they're much more, to be blunt, reader-friendly in terms of the length. I try to make the essays as reader-friendly as possible. I try to keep the pace somewhat sprightly and try to avoid getting them bogged down in self-indulgent diction, but as a writer, every once in a while, I can't help myself. But the essays are between 1,200 and 1,800 words, and they're illustrated, and I, and I do my best using hyperlinks and videos and audios and, and other tools that are available in this wonderful digital age we're living in to document and authenticate what I'm saying, <clears throat> as well as making citations from works which are not yet available in digital form. The easy way to get to Pro Libertate is to go to my <clears throat> intro website, which is called willgrig.com. Once again, that's willgrig.com. And to get to Pro Libertate, you look in the right-hand corner, basically the upper right-hand corner of that page. And at the top of the external links collection, you'll find Pro Libertate. And as well through either willgrig.com or through Pro Libertate, it's possible to have access to uh, my book. My most recent book is entitled Liberty in Eclipse, The War on Terror and the Rise of the Homeland Security State. It's available through... Amazon.com. To read to the end of any of the essays, there's a photograph of the cover of that book right next to a hyperlink that will take you to Amazon to order that book. It's been available as well through Radio Liberty, and I need to get on my associates down in uh, California, New Mexico, to make sure to get another supply of that book to you to sell. We'd love to get some. Thank you. It's about 320 pages long, and it's meant to be at once an expose and sort of a clinical history of how we ended up with the police state we're living in right now. Now, a lot of people might dispute the assessment that we're living in a police state as opposed to heading toward a police state. I believe that we're living in a police state of relatively 
mild, uh, of a relatively mild character as, as far as such things go. The problem is that we're living under such persistent, arbitrary state supervision, surveillance, and regimentation that people who do nothing uh, to offend uh, the rights or to transgress the, upon the property of other people or to offend decent public order can often find themselves on the receiving end of sudden and largely inexplicable state violence. There's a growing insecurity of your fundamental freedom of travel, your fundamental freedom of expression, and the basic uh, security of your person with respect to what the government can do to you at any time. Those are the symptoms of a police state, albeit one that's in the early stages of its development. And in the book I talk about how we got here, how likely, or how bad it's likely to get, and how we can take some steps back from where we are right now. One of the most encouraging developments, ironically enough, would be uh, the literal bankruptcy of our country, because if you bankrupt the, uh, actually I should say the bankruptcy of the regime, the country itself, of course, would go bankrupt if the regime simply stole all of our wealth in order to pay off its debts, which is something we discussed in a previous segment. That's not what I want to see happen. I want to see the government go bankrupt. That would be a good thing in that it would give us an opportunity to rein in the government that's ruling us right now and to reboot it on constitutional principles. That would be a really rough way to go about it, but it would certainly be better than having the government strong enough literally to confiscate all of the wealth of the country in the futile effort to pay back this astronomical debt that the government has managed to accrue. But in, free, in Liberty and Eclipse, I talk a little bit about some of the ways that we can mitigate what's going on and hopefully go about uh, the business of restoring uh, constitutional order, which begins with restraining what the government can do. I wish that one American in, say, 50 or one in 100 understood that that is the most important thing that law does, is restrain what government can do. There was a time when that was common knowledge in this country, and now we believe that the highest and most important value that... Uh, that the government represents is in its ability to steal from one group of people to enrich others. and So we always want to be on the receiving end of that transaction. Uh, that's what happens when you see a republic of a constitutional nature degenerate into a mass democracy, the sort we're living with right now. Uh, some of the other things I'd like to mention here is that I do write quite frequently for LouRockwell.com. I mentioned Lou Rockwell in an earlier segment. Mr. Rockwell is the president of the Mises Institute. Uh, he's a wonderful man who has a wonderful website of a very forthright and unflinching libertarian nature. I publish on that website and I also publish on their blog quite frequently. And Mr. Rockwell has a series of podcasts, which are just say uh, audio programs, radio interviews that are archived on his site. Uh, he has uh, a number of very, very important interviews with the likes of Peter Schiff, uh, from Europe Pacific Capital, who's been one of the most astute and, I believe, invaluable analysts of our unfolding economic and financial collapse. Uh, he was an economic advisor to Ron Paul's presidential campaign. He has several interviews in the podcast section. I have an interview in the podcast section talking about the militarization of the police. Uh, that's worth, I believe, listening to uh, because it does go into greater depth and detail on many of the subjects that I talk about in my book that I usually do in many radio interviews. There are also a couple of interviews with Gerald Salenti, who is a trends analyst from New York, who's, like Mr. Schiff, one of the most astute observers of what's been happening over the last several years. And uh, Mr. Salenti, like Peter Schiff, very accurately called the advent of the ongoing economic collapse uh, well in advance, a year in advance, and gave great uh, detailed and very prescient warning about what we could expect uh, Mr. Salenti, having uh, grown up in the Bronx and having gone through 9-11 and a number of other terrible, terrible experiences of that sort, is very, very much of the opinion that Americans should be prepared right now for the likelihood of widespread civil unrest and the concomitant crackdown by government on personal liberty and financial liberty in this country. But they need to be ready for that because that's going to become a reality very quickly, according to Mr. Salenti. Given this track record, I think he's worth listening to. Once again, his interviews are archived at Lou Rockwell's website, which I think is a really good place to visit. One other thing that I want to mention here that is uh, something of a, of a new undertaking that I think is very worthy. My friend Tom Edlam, who is the uh, former 
research director at the John Birch Society and, and the New American Magazine. 